Larry's team closes 750 transactions per year. And a lot of that has to do with setting up a brand new ISA team within his business. Hi, this is Brian Eisenhower, and I am here uh, with Larry Else from Detroit, Michigan. How's it going, Larry? Hey, I'm doing well. How you doing? I'm doing good. Larry and I have worked together now for less than a year, and I really thought it'd be good to get you out here to let everybody know what you've been doing, because uh, it's quite phenomenal. Larry, uh, Larry's team uh, in Detroit closes 750 transactions per year, and it's been so fun uh, to, to work with him, and, and, and they've shown significant year over year increases in production. And a lot of that has to do with setting up a brand new inside sales agent or ISA team within his business. We'll talk about that a little bit, what that's done for your team and the production, especially as of late, Larry. Sure, we started uh, ISA team about six months ago. We have a sales manager and IS, uh, about four ISAs. We've put all, all put through your training and uh, they're doing phenomenal January we had about 46 sales and 24 of those were contributed from the ISA team. So they're doing great. Our ISAs who are going through the program are doing phenomenal, putting prospecting into their day-to-day -day activity. And it's really been a huge opportunity for the agents in my office and, and just for training and, and really putting things into practice. That's awesome. Yeah, and I don't know if everybody knows when he said last month, he meant January in Michigan. And this January in Michigan, I know there's there's quite a little little bit of turbulent weather and to uh, close 46 units uh, and have 24 of them come from your ISAs is, is, is pretty darn impressive. Scott, who I've gotten to work with quite a bit, is your ISA manager. And Scott um, does an amazing job. He went through our ISA management course and is a certified ISA manager now. You know, he learned how to hire ISAs, how to train them, how to onboard them quickly to get them into production fast and continue to hold them accountable and work on their skill development. And it's just, uh, he, he's as good as they come. And I think that's what a lot of people don't realize um, that when, you know, a lot of people want to get an ISA, like, wow, this is an inside sales agent. They'll finally work the phones for me. I hate working the phones. What they don't realize is you're really running your own call center and that, you know, you have to do things to run your own call center, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I'd say hiring is, is a big uh, aspect of training and it's really helped us hiring and, and the onboarding and training. It's been significant for us, for all of my staff, from the receptionist to the sales manager, to the transaction manager. Uh, uh, the training system and onboarding has been really, really effective for us. And it's helped me from making bad hires. That, that's something I was always nervous about, kept me from hiring. And, and with the right training and right onboarding and right hiring process, it's, it's made a big difference in my hires. So it's been much higher ratio hiring a successful person for the position that I'm hiring for. I, I think, and I think that's a big part of it. You hit it on the head because, you know, no one really grows up saying, I want to be a telemarketer, you know, like that's not my thing. You know what I mean? It, it's often a stepping stone position. And as a result, when you hire an ISA, if you don't get them into production quickly and get them succeeding and earning income, you can have a really high turnover and attrition rate. So you really need to be good regardless at constantly hiring and training. We also, you know, help with some pass up out of that position too, to people that really succeeded and want to grow. If not, we're going to risk that turnover. So getting them, you know, getting all those ISAs through our ISA training course quickly and getting them in the chair faster so that they're actually producing and generating that income while they're training and, and working on that skill development really worked well for you. Then you guys, I mean, you guys did some pretty elaborate entire team planning with regards to implementation of tracking systems and scoreboards and accountability as well too. We did a lot when it comes to accountability and, and tracking from just ISA contacts to uh, having a daily or having a uh, weekly meeting with the entire staff and, and the checklist, the checklist for, for pending and closing transactions. There's been a lot that has, has really helped us um, make streamline the process so we can do more transactional volume without being overwhelmed. So without those things that we've implemented to, to track uh, all of our business, it would be chaotic. So uh, yeah, it's, it's been really essential to, to implement some of those, those things and, and the scoreboard too, whenever we have our weekly meetings and we go over the scoreboard and we motivate and talk about our weaknesses. That's, it's a big, big factor in our, our success, our growth, our development. 
Yep. I, you know, I'm with you and it's a testament to you guys too, because you've embraced systems, you know, and, and systems aren't sexy and they're not fun, but boy, they are great to have in place. Right. So getting them there is just not the best, you know, the best part, but we got them there. Right. When we do have a scoreboard so we can track response time, we can track lead follow-up contacts, initial contacts, all of those things to hold everybody accountable to doing what they should be doing. Everybody does better. Right. You know, everybody, everybody does better when, if you track it, it will grow. And you guys have done a great job of, of tracking it. And I think that's why you're getting such big results so quickly uh, and Scott's really embraced that he's embraced gamif gamification too right so he just kind of makes it a game you know everybody's always trying to see how they rank against each other in in all the different categories whether it be contacts or appointments set or uh, or lead follow up to every you know they're they're constantly trying to compete with one another and it makes it fun you know it makes yeah, it, fun. it fun it is fun it's it's fun for everybody here and part of it is is the gamification the contest the uh competition so it's that's that's another big factor in just getting everybody motivated to work every single day and, and make the calls and exceed expectations i agree okay so there's one thing i did want to talk to you about too because one of the systems we implemented that has been working really well for you and i think you guys have put some great personal touches on it is our two-week assault plan um and and what that is just for all of you that don't know it is a plan so when an inbound lead comes in Okay, so a lead comes in, um, any type of lead really, it could be you know a premium lead like from a Zillow or it could just be a forced registration from a website or anything that comes to us, you guys put them right into a two week assault plan and, and that means for two weeks, we are trying to make constant contact with that lead through various channels of communication. We're calling them, we're texting them, we're emailing them, we're shooting them video emails, we're trying to message them and find them on social media just to make that first telephone contact with the lead. Once we make the contact, then we switch them into uh, a variety of potential follow-up campaign categories, depending on the degree of urgency, right? Then it could be a hot lead, a warm lead, a cold lead. And those dictate the frequency of follow-up we're gonna do until they're ready to meet in person and, and, and purchase or, or, or sell a home. So two plans really, right? We start with the two week assault plan to make contact. And then once we make contact, we learn the urgency and we move them over uh, into your CRM's um, lead follow-up campaign category based on the degree of urgency and we stay in touch and we track those follow-ups to make sure they're happening. So tell us about how that two-week assault plan has kind of helped you guys and how you implement it to make more contacts with leads. That's helped us a lot. So we have a, a really good CRM uh, and we we put every new, new lead in there. A lot of times it's instantaneous uh, whenever they inquire with us. If it is an online lead, um, sometimes we'll get a call-in lead and that's that's great because we can convert them right on the spot. But um, a lot of times leads come in at night and things like that. So we want to make contact with them as soon as possible. So we blast it out and we have a, a, a ISA get assigned to it immediately. Uh, and then they're calling, texting, emailing for, for two weeks until we make contact with them. And then, yeah, we convert them over to hot lead, warm lead, and, and uh, we'll put them on a, a, a secondary plan. Uh, once we make contact with them and then we develop and nurture them until they're ready to start seeing houses or they're pre-approved or they have uh, proof of funds. And then at that point, we're moving on to the next stage. But yeah, uh, it's been really good for conversion and, and just tracking. Whenever you have so many buyers coming in, it's really easy to just let them all go or stop following up. And with the system we have, a lot of it's automated, but a lot of it's not too. We also, we have to make actual physical calls and actually reach out to them. But it, we do have a little bit of, of support in, in the fact that some of it can be automated, some emails, some texting, but but we got to make the calls too. So we assign it right away to ISA and it, it really has increased our, our buyer conversion from, from inbound buyer leads. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't get that, right? They don't get that <clears throat> when they call a lead, if they don't answer, you know, they might try again, right? But they don't really understand, like, the bulk of the business is in the follow-up. It is going to be very rare that a lead comes in that we make contact uh, and we convert off that first call. Um, the bulk of it's going to come from the follow-up. And it takes, I mean, on average, you know, you're talking about five or six contact attempts before we make contact. So many don't even ever try that. And that's our average, right? Yeah. So, you know, and that's, and, and so many people miss that. And if we are not tracking to make sure our people are making the requisite amount of attempts, 
uh, we're going to miss out on a lot of business. So we, we, you know, we do need to put some accountability in there and be able to track that. And that's why it's so important to have a plan that we can go in to your CRM and monitor to make sure that all of these contacts are being made in those first two weeks under the assault plan to make sure, because if someone's not, you know, A, we've got a problem. B, I'm going to stop sending that person leads because that one clearly is having a difficult time following up. They need to get caught up and we can learn so much about our team's performance uh, much more quickly and correct mistakes as we go. Uh, you guys have done an amazing job of that. Um, and it's a testament to the, to the production, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. A lot of it is the systems uh, and we are able to really track and monitor calls made, contacts made, um, how much they're following up and, they, and accountability, you know, it goes back to accountability where we can really see what they're actually doing and, and making sure that everyone is doing their follow-ups. And so far we've had a lot of success and, and we try to make it as easy as possible with those systems too. So they aren't struggling with their lead volume that they're easily able to kind of go through all their leads every day. So uh, yeah, it's, it's super important, especially if you're paying for leads to, to not be making those contacts, at least seven contacts to somebody before you give up. I know a lot of agents who, who kind of just give up after the first call, like you said, and they might be paying for Zillow leads and they make one call and, and that's, that's yeah, that'll kill you, man. <laughs> that'll absolutely kill you. Well, Larry, thanks so much for your time. I know you're busy and, um, and I really appreciate you sharing this and your successes with everybody and, and some, some amazing tips. I'm excited to, to keep going with you and see where this thing goes because uh, we're off to the races pretty quick. Thanks. I appreciate uh, the opportunity and all your support and everything. All right. Take care, Larry. Thanks. Take care.